Hi everybody and welcome back to my channel. In today's video I'm going to be sharing with you what's in our March morning basket. Now our morning basket is a bundle of books, resources that help aid learning. I have two children, uh, Rupert's four and Toby is almost two years old and this is just a great way of introducing um, phonics, uh, topics, nature study, shapes, all sorts of things that just I mean, open up their minds and encourages a lot of learning. Now, I call this a morning basket, but sometimes we dip into it into the afternoon as well, um, or throughout the day, but um, I like to keep everything contained in one basket like this, because it makes life so much easier and I can carry it from room to room as well. So, if you want to check out my previous videos on this, I will link them below. I've got quite a few that you can go back and watch, and some of the um, items that I have in this basket are repeats from previous months so in that case I won't go into depth today about those items but you can go back and check out the previous videos for a more thorough review. Okay so okay let's start right back here. So this month I decided to add in a new resource and uh, it is the morning basket by Whimsy Days, the Whimsy Days sorry. So I found this on Instagram and it was a very affordable resource and basically it's a Waldorf inspired guide to the month and what's, what it has in it is um, some poems and songs, some nursery rhymes and then some stories and they're all illustrated in these lovely little illustrations that my boys have been loving. And I'll show you the ones that are all sort of seasoning themes. So that, that one's called Leprechaun's Gold, The Legend of Pussy Willows. There's also um, a focus in on an artist, which I really like. Um, the image that's included is quite handy if you get it printed out because then you've got it there. You could also laminate these, pull them out and laminate them if you wanted to. Some lovely, beautiful, big um, printouts there. And then there's some suggestions for a composer for the month, and then also some modeling. Um, and I'm pretty sure that is it, yeah. And then there's some ideas for further reading it back. So what I like about this is that it's a very simple guide. There's not too much to it, which is a good thing for sure, because sometimes if you have too many things, it's really easy to get overwhelmed and you end up doing nothing. At least that's my experience. So I really like this sort of like neat and tidy little booklet. You could also just use this and not even use a morning basket because it contains the poems, the songs, the nursery rhymes, um, the stories and the artist study. So it's perfect for those early years when you don't want to overload your child with too much. Um, but yeah, I really like this. So I'll definitely be checking out the April edition of this for next month. And yeah, so far I really like this. I also wanted to include an, an alternative to the um, whole family rhythms guides that I usually show, which I do, I still really like those, but I wanted to include something that was actually available because um, I believe Megan has taken those offline now, so you can't buy them. But these ones are available and I'll link them below and they're very reasonable. Okay, so talking about songs and stories, I do adore this Winstone Press edition called Spring and in it is it's kind of like an anthology and it has um, a whole collection of poems, um, songs and there's some stories at the back and they're obviously all themed around spring so we have the rabbit and the carrot, the hare, seeds and then some of the songs actually include sheet music as well so if you are able to play the recorder or a piano that would be quite nice as well. And they're so, they're just so perfect. Every time I've picked up one of these books, I'm always really happy and the spring one is gorgeous. I love all the themes of the bulbs and the snowdrops and really it ties in so well with all the other themes that we're looking at this season. And yeah, it's, it's fantastic. I highly recommend these. They also come with free postcards if you buy them directly from Winstone Press. We got this one here on the back as a postcard and another image as well as a postcard, which is quite nice. So you can add those into your um, nature table and things like that as well. So yeah, I love that. 
So talking about music, I do actually have a recorder here. Now this is for me to play some of the music from that Moonstone Press book, but my children also like tooting away on the recorder. This is just um, a standard recorder, uh, nothing too special, but actually I've had this since I was about 11. I've always loved playing the recorder, so I got that for my birthday one year. <laughs> so it's still going strong and it's nice to pull out and um, bring to life some of those poems in the Winstone Press book. So I also really enjoy these seasonal cards from the brand at the Cherry Tree. This is the one for March and it has all these little pictures on it of boxing hairs and seasonal things that you'll see during the month here in the Northern Hemisphere. And they also have them obviously for April, May, June and the whole year. So we'll be pulling out the April one for next month. But I just think they're really sweet and they're a nice thing to pull out, sit down with your kids and talk about some of the things you might see and then you could go out for a nature walk and see if you can find the same things in the card. They're matte laminated, so they're pretty hardy. And there's also some extra nature notes on the back. So things that you'd see during the month of March. So I adore that. And that's been a really nice addition, that whole set of seasonal cards. I really, really highly recommend them. I also got from the same company at the Cherry Tree, these uh, laminated um, nature study cards. So I got a combination of wildflowers and bulbs, and I sort of combined them here for ones that we would see right now. So I've got things like Sweet Violet, Snowdrop, Daffodil, Primrose, some of them have text underneath, uh, Standy Line and Crocus. So the bulb ones don't have any text, but the wildflower set does have a little bit of text underneath. Um, so just the name, the Latin name, and then a little bit of notes on how to identify it. So quite fun. And we just keep them in this little drawstring bag. And because they're laminated, they can come outside with us and you can do some matching and things like that with them. So um, another really great resource. And um, we've been loving that. Um, I have got my Bob's books again. I'm not gonna open this up and go into too much depth because I talk about these every um, month. And I did say last time that I was going to get the next set up, which was the alphabet set. And I haven't got that yet. Um, but we are still working our way through the pre-reading skills and I repeat these quite often as well. You know, we've gone through the set um, before and then I just repeat them and uh, Rupert loves them. Doing our Jolly Phonics activity book. Again, I showed this in a previous video, so I won't go into too much depth with that. And we are also doing our pen control books. These are fantastic. Um, you get your whiteboard pen and you can just draw and color on these and wipe them clean. Fantastic as a quick activity to build up fine motor skills and um, muscle control, which is really important for writing. I also have my Waldorf alphabet book by Famke Zonveld. I love this. It works really well as part of our phonics and we then sort of talk about all the different images, all the things you can find in the pictures. There are quite a few books that you can get similar to this if this is not a style that you like. I do think those books that are based around the alphabet that have lots of items uh, belonging to that letter that you can find are fantastic and really good fun. And there are quite a few that I found on Amazon. So I'll try and remember to link those in my Amazon storefront so you can check them out if you want some variety. We also have our yellow door sensory shape still. Um, and I've got a really fun uh, swap for next month. So keep your eyes peeled for that. Um, oh, and then we're also working on frogs this month. So I have so many frog things in my basket. So the first thing that I got are these um, really fun frog life cycle toys. Um, I got these off Amazon and they were just so much better than I had anticipated. So the frog is actually quite big, which is fantastic for small world play or if you want to do like a sensory tub. He's really great size and very chunky. There's also frog spawn, a frog lit or a baby or a tadpole with back legs. And there's also a tadpole which is in the basket somewhere. The boys love playing with these. They are so much fun. I just put them into a cloth bag that I had hanging around um, and they really bring to life frogs and frog cycles. And we still have frogs spawn in our ponds and things like that around on the farm. And it's late March now as I'm recording this. So frog study has been really good fun. Um, this book was the book I decided to get to kind of teach the boys about frogs. And it's the RHS, How Does a Frog Grow? 
and I work, the reason I choose this one was mainly because it had photographs of frogs in it as opposed to illustrations which I really wanted and there's a couple of flaps to open, lots of facts, um, no flaps on that page. So really good at going through the whole life cycle of the frog and like I said it's got great photographs and then there's some more about different types of frogs at the back that you'd find all over the world and then they have a nice little life cycle at the back as well which is quite handy if you don't have anything like that and um, so that with the frog life cycle toys has been fantastic um, so we kind of kept in the theme of frogs um, throughout March and we've been reading the tale of Jeremy Fisher by Beatrix Potter of course and this is just like Rupert's obsession. He loves Jeremy Fisher so much um, and of course as you would expect with Beatrix Potter the illustrations are beautiful and the story is um, just the perfect length for a four year old um, but you could shorten it for a smaller toddler um, or you could also get your child to read it themselves if they're a bit older. I also have this printout. Um, I'm trying to think. I think this is from Fiddlesticks Education. And it's a laminated, I laminated it myself, but it's a laminated uh, life cycle of the frog. And I got this before I realised that the life cycle was actually in this book. So, I mean, you wouldn't need both, but it's quite nice to have this. You can either like pin up on your fridge or something like that so your kids can, can, keep, can keep looking at it. Um, during the month. I also got from Fiddlesticks Education this pond scene um, and it comes with um, counting lily pads. So it comes with quite a few of these lily pads. It comes with froggies and then also things like frog spawn, froglets, you probably can't see these, and tapples. And they're so cute. Um, so they're a really nice thing to practice counting with and building a little frog scene and I did laminate everything you don't have to laminate but I mean things just get destroyed so quickly if you don't so this way means we've still got them for next year which is quite handy um, and I also got a load of the fiddlesticks um, flashcards and these are all pond life so we've got tap holes the dark newts frog waterfall and like insects and things that you would see um you know in a pond and it's been perfect actually to have those to go along with our jeremy fisher book as well and again i laminated them just so they have a bit of longevity and don't get destroyed and yeah they're really really cute so little sticks education are just perfect if you want to get some affordable resources because you can print them out yourself at home and if you have a laminator you can get them laminated i borrow my um, father-in-law's laminator for that and then you can really bring all those subjects to life and I think young kids I think all kids love flashcards and things like that and they can lay them out and look at all the beautiful pictures so those have been fantastic okay so keeping in the theme of the pond um, I have Katie and the water lily pond by James Matthew I love the Katie series um, they are a great way to introduce art to young children and um, basically they sort of start off with Katie visiting the gallery with her grandmother and then she usually jumps into a painting and it kind of brings that artist to life. life. Um, and I choose this one because obviously of the water lily ponds I thought that kind of tied in with our frog theme um, but it does explore lots of different um, paintings by Monet as well. And yeah, it's beautiful. And I just find that Rupert is so charmed by this Katie series. It's worked so well for us. And I really look forward to getting the whole collection eventually because I mean, I enjoy reading them. He enjoys them. And it really does, like I say, bring art to life. So absolutely beautiful series of books. So I've kept the art book for children by Faden in our basket. I showed this in my last video so again I won't go into too much depth but I love how big and glossy this book is. Um, has lots of different artists that you might not necessarily think of initially so a really great one for building on um, art knowledge for children and learning about different artists. I also have the Usborne Famous painting cards. Again I've showed these so many times but they are brilliant. Um, they're flashcards 
that come, I don't know how many actually is in the pack, fifth, there's 30 in the packet, okay. Um, and they have all sorts of artists and artwork. And then on the back, there's these really great facts as well. So they would work so well for all age groups. And these would have been so handy to have when I was doing my A-level equivalent, um, for my leaving certificate, and you know, we had art history. They would have been such a handy thing to kind of like brush up on my knowledge. So even as a much older teenager, I would have still liked these. Um, so I can imagine we'll have those for so many years. So of course I've got my Julia Rothman Nature Anatomy book. This is fantastic because it has such an array of topics in it. It really does cover everything. It's fantastic. And of course for the frogs, um, I had these pages which we read together and looked at the pictures. Again, there was the life cycle and also the difference between a toad and a frog. And also what's great when I'm doing this kind of thing is I learn so much and I love that too. I love learning along with the kids. It's just so much fun. There's also Usborne's My First Outdoor Book. I highly recommend this if you've got young toddlers because it's got lovely chunky card pages and it loosely covers a quite a few topics. And this is the one that we were working with, the ponds. And as you can see, it's got a great pond scene um, and it's got the frogs and really clearly illustrated. So we have been liking this. This is actually from the library and I've managed to keep it out for quite a while now, which has been very handy. Um, but yes, for that younger toddler age, this is fantastic. And they can independently look at that book too because of the chunky pages, which is great. Okay, so I have got a counting book. We're still on One Fox, the counting book thriller. Um, and we have chickens, so I do love this book. And it's about this naughty fox that's trying to get into the chicken coop. And it's a great way of learning to count. And the illustrations are beautiful in it, so we love that. I also have the Beatrix Potter Touch and Count. Um, I don't know if this is still in print, but it's really nice for the recognizing the, nu the numerals, if that was the right word. Um, and then it's got the different textures, and Toby in particular, my youngest, loves that. Okay, so I also put this into our March basket because now we're in spring, the weather's really changing up, and uh, this book is fantastic for all those questions toddlers might have about why does it rain and what's a cloud and it has so many flaps to open and um, it's such a beautiful book and it goes through all the things like rain and rainbows, um, sunshine, lightning, wind, snow, I mean it's really really good and um, it's funny because when I started, when I had kids, I really wasn't that keen on the Usborne books, but I've really grown to love them and this is another winner from them. Really good um, at this time of year too when the weather's so changeable. I think we've had snow, sleet, rain, windstorms, the lot, rainbows, everything you could think of we've had. So that book is just perfect for tying in um, with the crazy weather. So for shape work, um, I have been reading this sweet book to the boys. It's Tim Hopgood's Walter's Wonderful Web. And this has been such a favorite with the boys. It's about this little spider who can't seem to make um, very good webs and they always blow away. And he ends up uh, using different shapes. So it goes through like diamond, rectangle, circles. And eventually he makes the most wonderful web of all and at the very back it goes through all the different shapes and I really like this I highly recommend it it ties in learning about shapes in such a natural way and it's such a fun story it'd be a great one to have at autumn time as well with the spiders um, but yeah I love it it's been fantastic um sensory toys in there these are just like stretchy worm things um, which are great for biting or playing with. And that can be quite handy if you have fidgeters. Um, and I also have these big packet of colorful lollipop sticks, which again is useful if you want to read a story to your kids, but they're fidgeting. They can play with these or the lollipop sticks and sort them out while they're listening to you. Um, oh, here we go. Here's the other bits from the frog. There's the frog with the tail. That's the froglet. And then we have the tadpole. 
since I have quite young children, I try and do lots of like finger plays and nursery rhymes with them because it's a really great way of developing speech and it's very interactive and engaging for them. So I have a couple of new books in that uh, area. The first one is Clap Your Hands, Finger Rhymes by Sarah Hayes and Tony Goff. I got this second hand, it's a Walker book and it's quite sweet. It has lots of really traditional nursery rhymes. And that you can obviously do the finger motions with too. There's Insuency Spider. And yeah, it's it's actually been really nice because Rupert has enjoyed looking at the pictures just as much as doing the finger plays. And yeah, it's a great one if you're a bit stuck on what finger plays to do, because this has so many in it. And most of them will be rhymes that you'll know and remember, which is quite handy. I also have the Beatrix Potter Nursery Rhyme Book. Um, again, this is a second-hand book. I'm not entirely sure that they print this anymore. But this has been nice to tie in with um, Jeremy Fisher, because there are quite a few froggy-themed ones here. There's Jeremy Fisher and a B. Um, so that's Jeremy Fisher and a B, and that one is Buzz Quoth the Blue Fly, and Fishers Come Bite. But as you can see, the pictures are really quite big in this, um, which is lovely if you want your kids to really explore the illustrations of Beatrix Potter, because in these small books, the illustrations are Pretty tiny so it's nice to have a larger version and there's absolutely tons of uh, nursery rhymes in this and they're all you know unusual nursery rhymes made up by Beatrix Potter I believe so um, they're ones you probably won't have heard of before which is quite fun um, okay my camera just cut out and I realized I wasn't recording the last bit of the video and um, but I'm actually almost finished I was just going to show you um, we are still working on the Sharks, Seahorses and British Sea Creatures sticker book by the National Trust. These sticker books are amazing. The stickers are so beautiful, highly recommend those. But I'm pretty sure I gave you an in-depth look, look at that uh, last month. Um, and we actually have a DVD in this morning basket. Um, I wanted to show this to you because if you have tractor mad children like I do, and um, this series by Tractor Ted is brilliant. Um, I sometimes let the kids watch this if I am cleaning up the house in the evening. Um, so that's why it's in the morning basket. And when they're really, really tired, I might pop this on. We don't actually have a TV, so they watch um, TV programs or um, movies very occasionally. But I do really like this series. Um, what's nice about this is it's very factual. So it goes through like the farm and all the different crops they're harvesting and lambing and things like that. So it's really fun for kids that are interested in animals and farm machinery. And I do recommend the whole Tractor Ted series. You can buy it on iTunes, so you can get like the whole range there. And it's, it's probably easier than buying the DVDs. Um, but I thought I'd show that to you. And then of course we have our first book of nature by Nicola Davis. Um, that's, this is a beautiful book. I've shown it so many times. It's uh, full of beautiful seasonal poetry. There's a nice farm one there. So of course we've still got that in our basket. And then I also have my printouts. I showed that last month. Okay, I actually forgot to record this part of the video, which was the mud and bloom um, for the month of March. So I thought I'd quickly just jump in here and show you. So these are some of the cards that came with it. There's some seeds to sow, um, another signs of spring checklist, and that was all the things that came with the march so seed bombs um a pressed flower bookmark making growing cherry tomatoes and making nature paint brushes so i've got the sibling box so i've got two of these and then it came with some uh, notebooks so you can put your pressed flowers on the outside some clay the wildflowers we have yet to do a lot on our mud and bloom i have to admit and um, it came with a gouache set Plenty of cards for the pressed flowers. 
and then some strings, some glue sticks, and these are for planting the tomatoes. We have actually planted out the tomatoes already. We did it in like a little egg box. Um, so yes, sorry, I was meant to show that in the actual video, but I forgot. But yeah. And yeah, I think that is pretty much it. So yeah, um, I hope you enjoyed that. I have really, really enjoyed teaching the boys about frogs, and actually I've enjoyed learning about frogs. It's been really good fun. Um, oh, actually, I do have one more thing. I almost forgot to show you. I have this other little art book. This is a fantastic series. It's uh, the Mini Master series by Chronicle Books. And um, it's just, I had, I think I showed you the Matisse one last time, but we ended up getting a couple more. And this one's all cassette. And yeah, they're gorgeous. The little story that goes along with them is just perfect. And yeah, lovely pictures that are nice, bright and chunky card really can't go wrong with this mini master series so yes there was one more thing to show you but now i'm finished um and yeah i hope you enjoyed watching this if you did give it a thumbs up leave me a comment letting me know what's in your morning basket or whether you enjoyed this video and um yeah i'll be back soon with another video thank you so much for watching bye